We're going to format this letter on the left using our classroom setup, which I've opened here in this window on the right. Now this was set up incorrectly, this letter on the left, using a blank document. Unlike the instructions over here that tell you use a single spaced blank template for your letter. So we're going to fix this letter up on the left and we're going to get started. So we're going to do a control A to select everything. We're going to change everything to Times New Roman. We're going to change it to 12 point size. And in order to fix the spacing, we're coming into the paragraph launcher. And we will switch this to zero and switch this to single line spacing. Say OK. That makes all those changes. So number four, one inch margins, layout, margins, one inch. We could also get to them, as you know, through the page setup, remembering to tab uh, between fields. One tab, one tab, one tab, one, enter. Our margins are set. Use mixed punctuation. You will come into the salutation. That will be a colon into the closing. This is actually a very European. We usually use sincerely, but we'll go with it. We'll put a comma there and correct the line spacing and fix the initials. So that's easy. I'm just going to fix the initials first. That's going to be from buck block. So that's a BB. Uh, very traditionally, the person that is sending the letter has the uppercase letters and the lowly typist has their initials in lowercase. Okay, and correct the line spacing and remove this text box. So I'm going to remove it now and let's go through this. So our return address, return writer return writer. The return address is the address of the writer and you can see it's here and your notes tell you that just to use your one inch margin if you're typing a return address. You know more often these days it's pre-printed but in this case we're typing it so we will keep that one inch address. Otherwise you have to make a bit of a judgment call when you have a letterhead of where to start uh, your date here, which you usually try and get it about uh, two inches. Okay, so we're going to keep that. Now, after the return address is one to four blank lines, depending on the letter type and length. So let's put our show hide on here. Uh, right now we have three, so let's leave it at that. Our, our date right now is sitting very close to the two inch mark, so I'm happy with that. Let's get rid of this and I'll just select over this, insert, come to the uh, insert today's date. I don't want it to update automatically, so I'll make sure that is not turned on so that every time I open this letter it will just record the date that I wrote and sent this letter. So I click OK. After our date, you can see over here, we have three blank lines. So we'll press the Enter key to put those in. I have a little space right there, which I'll get rid of. Now actually, I don't actually like that format. So let me come back here. You know, when we change to the United States, we get the format that is used most commonly, and I'm going to do that one. Okay, so after the date, we have three blank lines, and uh, actually, my mistake, if you have a reference line 
if you have a reference line, it goes right below the date. So take those out and put the three lines in here. Okay, we don't have a special mailing notation, but we do have an inside address. That is the person the letter is being sent to. And we have one blank line after that. I will tell you that this is a Canadian address here. According to the uh, Canadian Postal Company, even on letters and envelopes, you have two spaces after here, so I'm going with that. I'm going to put one blank line before the opening salutation one blank line after it, one blank line in between paragraphs, and then we have one of the exceptions. So in a lot of these places it's one blank line. So if you draw a blank, just use blank, one blank line. But there are the exceptions here, here, and after the closing. So it can be standard for three blank lines, that's not a lot of space to put a signature, so it's three to four blank lines is acceptable depending on, I guess, the size of the person's signature and the length of the letter. So I'm going to put in four. This letter is from Buck Block. Let me move down here. It's followed by the title. And then after the title, we're going to have one blank line. We have the enclosure right here, and you can see the reason that we have that is because there has been a voucher that's enclosed. Now sometimes it's spelled out on the next line, not always. In this case, we haven't uh, made a description, so we'll just keep it as that. We're going to have one blank line after the enclosure, and that's followed by our initials. I'm going to just turn off my show hide and I'm going to look at the letter and see if the balance looks good. I'm not sure, I think I might like to put one more blank line right here, but I want to just check with these here. So after the date is 3 and after the, the return address, return writer address, is 1 to 4. So I'm going to put one extra blank line there because I think that looks better. And then close it and this is now, uh, this is our block letter, all lined up at the left-hand margin to make it fast and efficient for typing.